everyone, welcome back to A-Level Lessons Online. Okay, I'm going to be covering the multiplier effect today. Um, this is part 5 of our macroeconomic um, lecture series, or topical series, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and we're going to be looking at this thing called the multiplier effect. Alright, this video is going to be a bit more, uh, a bit of a, I mean, slightly longer one, okay? Primarily because um, I'm going to be kind of like covering how to write an entire essay on the multiplier effect in this video, right? So, multiplier effect is extremely important in econs, um, especially your macroecons, okay? And it's very important when it comes to, um, lo like, looking at your ADAS okay so it is something that you usually use in conjunction with um, an increase in AD or AS usually AD okay and um, chances are you're going to be using this quite a bit um, in terms of at least stating okay that the multiplier effect exists Right, so I've already gone through a lot of stuff previously in the previous four parts. Okay, things like your ADAS, and then what happens when they shift, what happens when they intersect. Right, so go through and look at that um, if you need a bit of a refresher, and move on to the multiplier effect in this video. All right. So the multi uh the multiplier effect of changes in AD. So multiplier effect usually only applies to AD. Okay, it occurs when there's a change in autonomous spending. Okay, for example, a change in CIG X minus M. Okay, that is not due to a change in national income, but other non-income factors. So you're looking at a change in any of your factors that affect AD because of reasons that are not due to a change in your national income, your real GDP. Okay, so this will bring about a more than proportionate change in the national income. Okay, so the extent of change of national income would hence be determined by the magnitude of this multiplier called K. Okay, so the multiplier will always denote it as this alphabet K. So you're going to be looking at K a lot in this video, all right? Okay, so the multiplier K is basically, this is the formula for what it is equals to. Okay, it equals to 1 over MPW. So MPW stands for marginal propensity to withdraw. Okay, and then MPW equals to MPS plus MPT plus MPM. So the marginal propensity to save, to tax, and to import. And it is equivalent to 1 minus marginal propensity to consume. Okay, I've already gone through this actually, if, if, you, don't, if, if, you, if, you, if you haven't seen it yet. Okay, this is actually part of your circular flow of income. Okay, withdrawals and injections. Okay, so remember there's a part on withdrawals. And then there's also an error which goes back up, which is in terms of consumption. So whenever I look at this whole multiplier, I'm just looking at the um, STM, which is basically your withdrawals, which is your marginal propensity to withdraw. Okay, that means how likely is it, okay, when there's a change in national income for a household or let's say a person, okay, who has experienced that change in national income, to actually withdraw withdraw their money in terms of savings, in terms of taxes, and in terms of imports. Okay, that will be what makes up your marginal propensity to withdraw. Or either that, okay, what is the margin the, the likelihood, okay, of this person consuming more goods and services? So that will be the marginal propensity to consume. So marginal propensity to consume is opposite of marginal propensity to withdraw, and they both equals to one. Hence you would take one minus MPC to find what MPW is. So, like I've actually just explained, okay, what does marginal propensity mean? It is defined as the proportion of a raise in income that a consumer would in turn spend on consumption or savings or that goes into taxes or either that the purchasing of imports, okay? So, when you're looking at consumption, you're always looking at domestic goods only, all right? Always remember that for micro macroeconomics. So, it's the proportion of the income that people would spend on either CSTM or... Um, uh, or, I mean, STM under withdrawals, okay? So, more about your MPW in relation to Singapore. So, in Singapore, what happens is that the MPW, MPT, and MPM will only rise upon receiving additional income. So, I mean, this one not only applies to Singapore, okay? it applies to everywhere. Okay, Singapore has a very, very high MPS and MPM. So, mar marginal propensity to save and marginal propensity to, Im to import. Okay, this is because of the compulsory CPF saving scheme, which means that a proportion of a person's change in income will always go to the CPF. So this CPF will help a, p a person to tie through retirement. Okay, um, once they have grown old and stuff, this is a it's a scheme. Okay, by the government, and the reason why MPM is also very high is because of a lack of domestic resources. Hence, a large proportion of your additional income is usually spent on imports. So things like Nike, Adidas, uh, any of your foreign brands. Okay, that will be where your likely. The, I mean, that's likely where most of your additional income will be heading to, okay, because we don't exactly have very, very famous or we don't exactly have our own domestic brands, okay, that people will actually go and spend on. Okay, so then we move on to the multiplier effect essay. So this essay is, uh, a lot of you guys who have already learned it in school, okay, it's basically these seven steps that you need to know. And it is a very, very important essay because it can come out in a huge mark question. I mean, even in a 10 mark question, it is considered quite potent, okay, if you don't, get these marks, 
chances are the rest of the the, the students sitting for the exam are going to get it. Okay, so make sure you learn these seven steps for play. Okay, I've already put it in a very, very easy to understand way in this video. So just follow this video step by step. Write it down on your notes and then go back and just regurgitate. Okay, you go and memorize and then regurgitate. Okay, so the first step is to identify a change in the autonomous spending. So a change in your CI, GX or um, M. So for example, okay, over here I give you a rise in autonomous export earnings. So a rise in X caused by a rise in income of your trading partners. So that means it's always not a change in your domestic national income. Just remember that, okay? It is not a change in your own country's real GDP. It could be a change in someone else's real GDP that is not yours. That is fine. That is considered a non-income factor. So this will cause AD to rise. Okay, then after you state what the multiplier process is, so this will lead to a multiplied rise in national income due to the knock-on effect on higher consumer spending that is being induced by this higher um, or this larger additional income. So this sentence essentially means that with and uh, with a case of increase in exports, you're basically going to have a, you're going to see an increase in AD. So when you see an increase in AD based on your diagram, there will be an increase in your real GDP. And this is because of this thing called the knock-on effect. Okay, there will be an increase in consumption, for instance, um, which is induced by this higher income. Okay, so then you give a numerical example. So just give a very, very simple example with um, numbers. So for instance, with a rise of $10 million in exports, okay, the exporting firms will receive an additional increase in income of 10 mil and pay the households. Okay, remember, we're always paying the households. They are working, they are the factors of production that's working for us. So you assume that their marginal propensity to consume is 0.8. So the first group of recipients will spend an additional 8 million, which is 0.8 times your 10. Okay, on domestic cons uh, consumer goods, so remember domestic goods, huh? whenever you're looking at consumption, and withdraw the remaining 2 million from the circular flow of income in terms of savings, imports, and taxes. So the additional consumption of 8 million will cause the next group of recipients to experience an increase in income of 8 mil and increase their consumption by 6.4 mil, which is basically your MPC times your 8 mil, the increase in their national income. And then after that, this will increase the national income of retailers by 6.4 mil. So the process of spending and respending will cause national, incre uh, national income to increase more than proportionately okay, than the original increase in your um, export earnings and will stop okay, once the original increase in injections is equal to the withdrawal. So this is back to your circular flow of income. I've gone through it in the first video. All right, go check it out. So this part is very simple. Give a very, very simple numerical example. Take and then just assume what the MPC of the country is. So that means the propensity to consume. And take that pop, uh, MPC and then multiply it by the increase in income. You will find that that is the amount that the pers that the, the entire bunch of recipients will be spending on the cons consumer goods, domestic consumer goods. Then because in order to consume domestic consumer goods, you have to pay who? You pay the firms. So the firms will then receive this another amount and pass it on back to their factors of production. And then that cycle will keep on repeating itself. So then next part is you draw a diagram. So you draw the AD diagram. Very, very simple diagram here. Just rise and exports will shift AD. We've already gone through this before. By a larger extent from AD1 to AD2. And a final national income rises will rise from Y1 to Y2. So I've already drawn this diagram before in my AD video. So it's very simple. You just need to show that there's an increase in your AD. And always remember that this occurs below to near full employment. I know it's a bit hard to see, okay, but essentially it's always below, below to near or at full employment. Okay, so try not to go all the way up. Okay, don't go to at full employment because over here is where inflation can occur. All right, then after you state the size of the multiplier, so this part is quite easy also. So the extent of the rise in national income would depend on the size of the multiplier k, right? Because that depends on. I mean, this is the extent. Okay, we know that national income will rise, but to what extent? Is it a large extent or is it a small extent? Okay, so then we just need to explain or define what K is, which is directly related to MPC and inversely related to MPW. So K equals to this, 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 which equals to 1 over 0 0.2 equals to 5. Okay, the reason being is because just now we stated that MPC, okay, I mean, uh, back in our numerical example, okay, we stated that MPC equals to 0 0.8 which means that MPW equals to 1 minus 0 0.8, which equals to 0 0.2. So K equals to 1 over 0 0.2, which equals to 5. That is how we line up with a multiplier of 5. 
Okay, so then after that, when X rises by 10 million, national income will rise five times to 50 million. So essentially, a multiplier is actually what it means, a multiplier. So it multiplies by that, that amount, that numerical amount. So in this case, because we got five from our K, which is equivalent to one over MPW, which is 0.2, our national income will basically increase by five times that multiplied amount. So it increase from 10 mil all the way to 50 mil, a lot. Okay, next part, you want to analyze whether the effect on national income is real or nominal. So whether the rise in national income is real or nominal depends on the level of resource utilizations. Okay, you can forget about this part. Don't worry about it. Um, I actually covered it in this next slide over here. Okay, so if the country is currently operating below full employment, a rise in exports okay, will lead to a larger rise in real output and national income due to the multiplier effect. Right, it makes sense, right? Because a rise in exports, like we've seen, a rise in AD. But if you're looking at below for employment based on the graph, there will be a greater increase from Y1 to Y2. So that means that national output has actually increased by a larger extent. But if the country is operating at or full employment, like just now we saw inflation will occur, right? So there'll be a rise in exports leading to a rise in general price levels, hence a smaller increase in your real output. So that's why your rise in national income is largely a nominal rise. That is the difference. Okay, so you just need to determine whether your national income rise is real or whether it's going to be nominal. So in order to determine that, you need to see based on the scenario whether the economy is operating at full employment or below full employment. That will help you determine. Okay, so lastly, the evaluation um, of your essay is just to explain what are certain assumptions that you may have missed out or you want to include. So the presence of crowding out effect may occur, and this can reduce the impact of a rise in exports or government spending on the economy. So crowding out effect is basically um, when there's a rising public sector spending that will drive down or eliminate private sector spending. So what it means is that when there's an increase in G or X, your I would drop instead. That is essentially what it means. So overall, there may not even be an increase in AD at all. So that is what the crowding effect basically means. So it's the form of resource or finance crowding out. Okay, so I repeat it one time. So crowding out effect, basically, if there's an increase in G, likely there won't be an increase in I. So for example, the government spends on more investing equipment for firms. As a result, firms don't even need to spend it themselves. They don't even increase their investments to begin with. Uh, in fact, they may even drop in terms of investments. Okay? So that will balance out everything. AD may not even increase much. Okay, so overall, your exam requirements for this chapter is actually quite simple. Okay, you just need to be able to write the entire essay on the multiplier effect. Just follow the seven steps that I've already taught you and understand the various ways in which the size of the multiplier may change. So this one depends on the context. So if you're looking at Singapore, Singapore has a very, very high propensity to withdraw okay, because of your high savings and your high um, imports. As a result, MPC may be smaller, MPW may be larger, okay, and this would result in a slightly smaller or either that bigger uh, multiplier depending on which context you're looking at. Okay, so um, after that, okay, you can just basically define okay, based on what you have known, okay, what the size of the multiplier may say about the economy. So if your multiplier is very, very, very huge, it likely means that your if we if we look at the slides back there just now, okay, if you see in this case, a multiplier of five K okay, means that your marginal uh, propensity to withdraw is 0.2, which is quite small. Okay, so if it's five, that means that chances are okay, this economy could actually be um uh it may not exactly have a very, very large savings or imports um that people actually would spend their additional income on. Okay, on the other hand, if it's let's say um an even smaller number okay it would mean that um chances are there's barely any imports okay or savings but if it's much larger okay for example your mpw is very high like singapore okay singapore will definitely have a very very high mpw and, and hence the multiplier will be very very small okay this means that it is because of your high savings as well as your high um uh taxes as well as your imports that people would spend their additional income on Okay, so actually, yeah, that is all I have for this video. Okay, multiplier effect is actually very simple. You just need to follow the seven steps. Okay, just understand what the multiplier is all about. Okay, and then the rest would be able to just, um, you'll be able to guide yourself throughout the essay. You, it won't exactly be that difficult. Okay, so when it comes to writing essays in the future, multiplier effect, you just need to state it. You don't have to write the full seven steps because sometimes essays, you may not have time. Okay, so just roughly um, get the gist of it. Okay, just state what the multiplier is why it is like this, okay, what, what does it mean for economy, um, is it a real or nominal rise, and what are the assumptions, is it below full employment or at full employment, and then um, state what that number of the multiplier is, and hence why your national income may rise by a large amount or a small amount. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. Um, if you did enjoy it, okay, be sure to give it a like, okay, as, well, as well as to subscribe to the channel, it really does help me out a lot. Um, if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.